Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing awesome out there tonight. Had yourselves a fantastic day, and I hope everyone had a great weekend as we wrap it up and it comes to an end, unfortunately. But we're about to head off into another work week where we'll be jam-packed weather just like any other week. Uh, but this week, there'll be two main things to watch out for. And we're not just talking about severe weather this time. We're also talking about the tropics. A lot of tropical rains, flooding rain potential across really the state of Florida. But this eventually could ooze further north into areas of the deep south, the Gulf states, maybe just the southeast in general. So we need to speak on that. But first and, and foremost, we will speak on the severe weather potential. We're not going to talk about what's going on right now. We're just going to keep it in front of us like we always do on this channel. We'll speak on Monday. Uh, pretty much uh, onward all the way through the rest of the work week. We'll talk about what's driving the severe weather days ahead of us. And we're really watching Wednesday and Thursday for areas of the high plains and areas of the north central U.S. and the Midwest. There will be a threat tomorrow, also a slight risk that could uptrend. So we need to figure that one out. Uh, and then we'll give you a very detailed look at the tropics, like I mentioned, and uh, really talk about what's driving all this. We're going to uh, nerd out on you guys. If you're not into that kind of stuff, well, you know, I, I don't really have, I guess, anything to add. Um, but uh, that's what we do here on this channel. We get very detailed and uh, try to get you guys as the audience to really understand what's driving uh, the weather features out there and what's driving the weather. So if you notice behind me, my cats, I got two of my cats on my bed. I got Rocket and Stormy back there. You guys know Rocket. Probably haven't seen Stormy in a while, but they're chilling behind me, taking a a little afternoon Sunday nap, so I didn't think I would mess with them. So you might see some movement back there if you do. It's just two cats, uh, but um, I don't think anybody cares too much about that. I know you probably uh, like uh, the cat vibe. A lot of people say they like the cats being in the video, so there they are. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And more importantly, if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below, and I'll catch up with all the comments probably tomorrow afternoon. I know I've missed probably many prayer requests. I'll get to all of them uh, probably uh, Monday after lunchtime tomorrow. So let's get rocking and rolling. So we're going to start off by looking at the wider vapor loop. Haven't done this in a while. Let's make sure our cursor is working. And it is. So we're going to show you the features out there, which will be the dominating features throughout the next couple days. And things will kind of switch up a little bit as we move a little bit deeper in the week. But in general, uh, a lot of the, the players on the field will stay out there at least for the next uh, few days. So... Um, if you notice, it's hard to tell, but there's a flow kind of going like this over the western U.S., and then it kind of starts to dip back down, and then it kind of goes a little bit more zonal, more west to east, kind of going like this. And then if you look up here, there is a big old spin kind of going like this. This spin is affecting areas of the interior northeast, bringing numerous showers and storms, nothing too crazy, but you're directly under this upper trough, this uh, trough of low pressure, okay? So... Uh, let's move this back off your screen. So a trough is really just digging down into this region right here. So it's spinning just like that, quite literally. And then the ridge is building up over here. And then basically you got, let's move this area, area right here. If you see the whiter colors on your screen, that indicates more moisture in the atmosphere. The more doled out colors, like the dark grays, just the darker the colors you get on your screen, that's the more drier air in place. Probably not getting much moisture in place with that. But if you notice... There's a lot of areas in white popping up over the central Rockies. There's embedded pieces of energy up under this weaker ridge right in place. So this basically pivots around uh, this ridge and then kind of comes back down. And then we're going to watch for the development of this trough in place, cold front boundary somewhere in here. The development of maybe a line of storms that kind of sweeps through this area throughout the next several hours into the overnight hours. That'll be the severe weather event I would say over the next 12 hours that we really need to watch for. And then we just got embedded energy down here under this ridge that we just spoke on uh, that's really firing down here. We could get a little bit of a flooding situation over the next several hours in areas of New Mexico and western Texas. So that's the pattern in general. Uh, if you didn't really understand or follow that, ridge up here building into this region. All right, trough dipping down into this region, okay? And uh, that's pretty much the driving steering currents of the pattern right now. Just the pattern in general. So that's the water vapor loop, and, and you'll actually get to see that on the 500 millibar chart a little bit better as we move a little bit forward into the video, a little bit deeper into it. So let's talk about tomorrow's severe weather threat. We have 
Two areas to watch. One's uh, a pretty long area that literally, quite literally stretches all the way from the U.S.-Canadian line all the way to the U.S.-Mexican line, Mexico line. So, uh, but the area that we need to watch out for the most is this slight risk. Level two out of five in the yellow. And then we got the marginal risk in the dark green, level one out of five. I expect some of this to tweak a little bit as we wake up tomorrow morning. But this is the main area right out here in the high plains that we need to watch out for. You know, areas of South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, even a very small, very small corner of southeastern Montana. There is an also an area down here that kind of will be the same patterns we're getting today. That will kind of uh, will just be enough thermodynamic energy in the atmosphere, higher surface temperatures, higher cape levels, a little bit of moisture in the atmosphere. They'll just fire up those thunderstorms. So we're going to get another day and another risk of widespread showers and storms down here in this marginal risk area in the southern high plains in New Mexico, Texas, and Colorado. And then we got this area down here. This trough is really working in place. Okay, it's kind of stretching out over this region right here, bringing uh, more, I would say, drier, more stable air. Stable as in uh, you don't really have an atmosphere that's going to produce severe weather. Just because you have more of stable air, that doesn't mean you're not going to get any moisture at all. It just means you're lacking really uh, the, uh, I would say, the ingredients for strong and severe storms. So there's going to be a cold front draped across somewhere in here. And anybody south and along this cold front, you're still going to have an opportunity for thunderstorms down here. And you actually have, you actually have a marginal risk down here from you know Myrtle Beach, basically Charleston, Savannah, South Georgia, and the Panhandle of Florida. You're going to get start to get numerous thunderstorms down here in Florida, and we'll talk about why in the second half of the video when we break down the tropics. So what is this driven off of? Tornado risk, Rapid City, two percent risk of a tornado in the green area, within 25 miles in the given location. All right, some of this information could tweak. As we wake up tomorrow morning, yellow area, 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. Hail threat, 15% risk in the yellow area, hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. Okay, so that's tomorrow's severe weather outlook. What about uh, day three, which is for Tuesday? Just a marginal risk, level one out of five. I could see two, Tuesday's kind of an in-between day of what's happening right now tomorrow and then what potentially can unfold Wednesday and Thursday. Tuesday, a little bit of an in-between day. And uh, like I said, I will talk about why here in a second. Um, but you are going to have enough higher end thermodynamics down here in the southern plains for some strong and severe storms. And once again, you can see the influence of this trough really cutting down thunderstorm activity. General risk of thunderstorms kind of, uh, you know, on the west side of this, on the south side of this, even the east side of this. And, you know, everybody right in here, not going to see much thunderstorm action Tuesday, if any at all. So just going to really be confined to the middle of the country, deep, deep south, hugging the Gulf Coast and really especially in Texas. I don't think, uh, you know, Tuesday will be a huge deal. I could see a marginal risk getting issued somewhere up here, though. And then we, we go on and uh, move into our Wednesday, day four. Okay, this is Wednesday, June the 12th. All right, 15% risk. This is basically a slight risk. Remember, we have level one out of five marginal, level two out of five slight, level three out of five enhanced risk, which shows up in orange typically. Um, always actually. Uh, level four out of five, a moderate risk, typically shows up in red. And then level five out of five is a high risk. Okay. I've seen that a couple times so far this year. But um, slight risk here, level two out of five. Actually, we've only seen it once. I'm sorry. Um, level two out of five, 15% risk of severe weather within 25 miles in the given location. Okay. This includes areas of the upper Midwest. Uh, Sioux Falls, you know, Aberdeen, uh, almost down to Des Moines, Ames, Omaha, you're including this. So 15% risk of severe weather. And then we move it into our day five, which is for Thursday, June the 13th. Slight risk, Milwaukee, Chicago, down to Peoria. Not quite down to St. Louis, but does include Des Moines, Omaha, Lincoln, northern sections of uh, Kansas, and pretty much almost all of eastern Nebraska. So Level two out of five risk already. Confidence is already that high for severe weather for uh, Thursday. What is this driven? What's going to drive this? Well, we don't know the outlooks because it's too far out. We got to get into day two. But uh, if I had to make a call now, I would say damaging winds will be the biggest threat with this. But we still got to watch. OK. All right. So this is where it could potentially get confusing uh, for you as the viewer. So we're going to actually show it in multiple different ways. The first way we'll show it is the 500 millibar chart. If you're a first time viewer or if you've been viewing for a while and still don't completely understand what I'm talking about. And trust me, I mean, even as a, as a weather geek, a weather enthusiast, I had to kind of re-go over this many, many, many times before it kind of, you know, flowed to me a little bit better. But this is for this evening. 
So it makes sense, right? You know, this and the orange is rigid, right? Um, the blue is troughing. Lower pressure, ridging, higher pressure. Lower pressure in the blue, higher pressure in the more warmer colors, okay? Anything in between, you can have energy. Now, you can have energy embedded in the ridge like you're getting right now. But you're thinking, what's the white area as well? I mean, that's uh, basically where you could just have a flow in the atmosphere. It's kind of, you don't want to think about it too much because there's no point to. But um, basically, if you look at what's going on right now, well, actually, let's go back and look at the wider vapor loop. You can actually see it. You see how the ridge is going kind of like this, going like this. And then you have the trough kind of digging down right in here. A little bit harder to see the trough. Okay, ridge building up this way, trough digging down like that. Well, if you kind of get this back off your map and get right back off the screen and go back to this, you can see it. You see how this is digging like this? Kind of almost digging to the southwest. And then this is kind of pushing upward. So it makes sense. You compare it with that, going up like that. This is going down like this. You look at that. Look, and, and I'm just kind of showing you kind of comparisons so you understand um, when you compare it to the water vapor loop or satellite to actually what this particular model is saying, what's happening right now. It, it makes sense. Okay, so now that we got that established, um, we keep this going and we are starting to get into Monday morning. Okay, ridging typically associated with when you especially have a stronger ridge, which this really isn't super strong of a ridge. This is kind of just a, a weird, not fully entrenched ridge, if that makes sense. Um, you can still have impulses of energy, even though ridging typically is associated with sinking air. You still got flow embedded in a ridge. Okay, trough, you got a lot of flow. Lower pressure. If you ever learned that, I think you learned that kind of in elementary school, middle school, you know, low pressure typically uh, means there might be a storm coming. You might have been taught that. Maybe not. I can't remember. Um, but lower pressure typically associated in the blue with more activity, ac active weather. Higher pressure typically means a nicer day. But that doesn't always reflect to what's actually happening outside when you walk outside, right? So, you know, you get into Monday. What I want you to notice here is kind of these lines. You see this line right here, this line right here, this line right here. These are isobars. One thing that, you know, like a weather geek like me can look at when looking at these isobars is you can find embedded pieces of energy in the ridge or associated with the trough. So one thing you notice here is you see how you have a dramatic dip in these lines that kind of go like this up here in Canada and Montana. It's a terrible line. See how they're dipping like that? That is an embedded piece of energy um, at the bottom base of a trough. You see this little piece of blue up here in Canada? That's a trough digging down just in Canada. This is digging into the ridge. And basically what I'm trying to say is there's a piece of energy right here. Now, does this interact with any higher moisture levels to really get some storms going? Because you can have energy all day long, you know, in the atmosphere, but does it interact with that thermodynamic ingredient? Your, you know, your better surface heating, your better surface moisture. Uh, what, what does it do? Well, it does. In this case, there's just enough moisture building into the high plains that, you know, interacts with this, what we call short wave trough or just a weak low pressure. And here it is. And if you look into a Mon uh, Tuesday evening, which remember, we have that slight risk right in here. You can see the lines digging down and just kind of like buckling like that. You can see it kind of coming down like weird little circles right into here. I know you're thinking, man, what are you drawing on the screen? Anyways, you can see energy right in here and you can see a little trough ejection kind of div digging down here and it's actually eating away at this ridge and then if you look down here which if you remember there's also let's get this back off your screen there's also a marginal risk all the way down here right so if you actually look down here you see more so just white down here but little splotches of blue that's energy sort of entrenched into the trough kind of pushing through this region a little bit of flow main flow up here a little bit of flow down here too under this ridge and then you got this main trough digging right here not really influencing much but there's going to be energy at the base of this trough south of a boundary a cold front associated with this trough okay get this back off the screen and we move let's go on and move and basically this is what's going to bring enough oomph in the atmosphere kinematics overlapping the thermodynamics overlapping ingredients for severe weather for your monday across the high plains okay and then you get into your tuesday you notice this trough ejects across Canada. Associated surface flow begins to move out into Canada. Ridge tries to build back in right here. In fact, it really does. If you're wondering what this blue blob down here is, this is basically a trapped, what we call cutoff flow. It's literally trapped up under the ridge. It cannot fully eject. 
it's just chilling down here. So it's not going to bring any severe weather or anything. But if you are wondering what this blue blob here is, that's lower pressure. It's just a cut off piece of energy literally trapped under the ridge. Okay, they can do some wild things sometimes when they do move over land. But anyways, we get into Tuesday, right? You're thinking, okay, well, remember Tuesday, just a general risk of thunderstorms up here, marginal risk down here. So you go back and look at this. Once again, there is a little bit of energy kind of embedded in this uh, ridge or you know, just some energy right in here. Okay, sometimes just daytime heating is enough to get these storms going when you have just a little bit of flow. At the same time, this trough ejection in Canada is moving on out, right? There's probably some sort of low right in here, um, but I really think you're lacking enough push in this region uh, to really get any thunderstorms going. You might have enough thermodynamic energy, but you, I don't think you're going to have enough push to really get widespread thunderstorms going up here, but you might. That might could change. That's why as of now, Tuesday, not a big day, not a big day, really anywhere. Okay, so that's Tuesday. We got that established. Let's get into Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Okay, let's take it about late morning, midday. One thing I want you to notice: ridge fully built into this region, right? Cut off low down here. Not really going to speak on this. And you basically got a zonal ridge in the northern Rockies, kind of going like this, right? You got a trough right up here digging down. And in this white area between the orange and the blue, that is where your jet is. That's where your that's where your energy is really going to fly through, right? Okay, so you got impulses of energy, what we call short waves or short wave troughs, weak low pressures that kind of go through this region. And then when it, get, when it gets down here, guys, there's weaker ridging where you see the lighter shades of orange. So this begins to fill the current, and then this is able to kind of dive down like this. So this is Wednesday about midday. Let's get this back off your screen. I know you're drawing a lot. And you get into Wednesday evening. I know it's hard to tell, and it's it's not the best example of this, okay? But you got, you see this weird little circle right here, right, right, right outside of Minneapolis, for example? There's energy right into here doesn't show a lot but it's there okay and I think that this is where you'll bet you'll have your best pull will push of uh, low level thermodynamics your better surface moistures pushed into this region you're gonna have enough flow riding between the trough and the ridge remember and I'm going to show you a fantastic example of this here in a second remember how I told you this morning this morning's video that on average the jet begins to shift further north the deeper you get in the summer well that's exactly what's going on. I mean, you got this ridge built over this region, more of a neutral kind of look over the eastern U.S., a little bit of uh, lower pressure overhead. But, I mean, you can really see the pattern in the central and western U.S. very well on the 500 millibar chart for the most part. So that your, inner, your best overlapping ingredients is going to be right here. Best flow, best uh, thermodynamics, uh, meaning surface moisture dew points in the 60s, higher uh, surface temperatures and all that good stuff, okay? And then we start to get into Thursday. This is when you can really see it, okay? And we'll go on and just take it all the way. Uh, let, let's just take it all the way to Thursday evening, okay? This little blue area that you just saw here, this ridge is really starting to build into this region. This blue area that was right here is now kind of dove down in this region. This is still a positively tilted trough. Remember we talked about this is positively tilted, still positively tilted, so still a weaker system, okay? But this is diving down now, trying to feel some sort of weakness in the ridge right here. Um, this will be the driver. There'll be some sort of low pressure, I don't know, into here, into here, into here, somewhere, and we'll be able to see that better when we look into surface features. But this will drive a severe weather threat, most likely, I mean, somewhere into here, and, and you can't really see it. You can see, you can see little impulses of energy right in here, right? You see these weird little buckles in the lines, kind of going like that. That's little little pieces of energy, and, and and remember, I told you that they can be embedded in the orange areas on the 500 millibar chart. So there still can be energy in the ridge, okay? So your flow is probably just screeching across like this. A lot of low-level moisture building into this region for sure, and then you have. 
development of an injecting trough across the Great Lakes region, some type of surface low, and then, you know, you're probably going to get severe weather right in here. And if you kind of keep this going, guys, and, you know, you'll start to look into even your Friday. This thing, as we get into Friday uh, morning, this thing is fully digging down at this point. Starting to almost, it's still positively tilted, tilting to the west, but it looks like it's about to go negatively tilted. And uh, this ridge is really building right up into Canada now. I mean, the flow is going way up here. The jet's shooting down, uh, you know, up here, then back down here. So this trough is is basically just riding this jet right here. It's really eject and ejecting down here. And then we kind of get this back off your screen here. And we keep this going in. And this is what interests me about the Northeast. I think Friday could be a severe weather day for the Northeast if you can have enough um, overlapping ingredients. For example, for the Northeast, I mean, this thing gets uh, starting to take on a negative tilt now. And you can see how the lines are beginning to buckle right in here. I would say watch out for a severe weather threat for Friday for the Northeast. Ridge following in behind this. There's that cutoff low that finally uh, tries to find some room here. At least that's that cutoff low embedded into um, uh, the southwest. So flow going way up here, shooting way down here. Uh, trough really moving through this region. You're going to have some sort of severe weather, I think, for the northeast Friday. Calling it now. Um, after that, no point in getting too, too, much, too, too much further out there. All right, so now we spent a lot of time on that. Another fantastic way to look at this is your 500 millibar flow. This is winds 18, 19,000 feet up in the air. And, you know, we'll kind of start this off Monday morning, tomorrow morning, and we start to move this into Monday afternoon. I want you to take a look right into here. You see this little splotches of purple? That's that little bit of oomph in the atmosphere for Monday's marginal risk, tomorrow's marginal risk for New Mexico and Texas. And guys, you know, I'll say this, even if you're not being impacted by the severe weather, we know there's not as many people that live in the Northern Plains either. I think this is a good learning lesson. Trust me, I learned my most over the last couple summers about severe weather than I did in the spring. Um, because these little features in this ridge, I think are fascinating. Um, I think that when you can figure those out, it's much easier to figure out the higher and severe weather threats, in my personal opinion. It really is. So you look at Monday afternoon, you see a little energy down here. That's just enough flow with ample amount of thermodynamics. You just get a little bit of push in the atmosphere. I mean, you're going to get at least a small risk of severe weather. But most of your flow with a ridge built up in the here um, is riding right over the Pacific Northwest, um, the Northern Rockies, right here into this region. This will overlap a, a better um, a, thermodyna a thermodynamic environment. Not as good as down here, but you have much better kinematics up here. So this will drive probably... A, a um probably some set, strong to severe storms almost more in a uh, linear type mode i would guess into this region okay now you're getting all this back off your screen let's try to keep this moving here if it'll move for us i hope it does uh it looks like it is so we start to get into tuesday this is tuesday morning and remember tuesday is kind of that day where you know, it doesn't look that high end, but you get in a Tuesday afternoon, prime heating of the day. Still just enough flow down here. See these pockets of like purplish blue kind of tint? That's just enough flow aloft to, to really get kind of put some a forcing factor in the atmosphere to get these storms going. And there there is some flow right into here. It could get some storms going, but what what about your low level flow? You know, is that gonna be there to really get these storms going? And I'm not gonna pull that up. And, uh, you know, it, it starts to get displaced from the main surface low up here. So we got to watch. But look as this mid-level jet is starting to move into the Pacific Northwest, um, the uh, Northern Rockies. That's going to be your main show that starts to develop and move into the region as we get into Wednesday. And here it goes. I think that this is a fantastic look at how it unfolds. Here it is. This is the um, Euro. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is this the Euro? Yeah, this is the GFS. I'm sorry. I remember I had to look at the GFS in this case because the 12Z hadn't ran. Um, but, you know, check it out. You notice there's no flow down here. Okay. This is a, remember I showed, I said about 10, 15, it's crazy these videos are so long, about 10 minutes ago that on average the jet begins to shift further north. Well, this is a great example of it. This is this weird outlier thing down here because this is your cutoff low that we're not really speaking on. But a nice zonal flow this is where your jet stream is up here. 
a westerly mid-level flow, and then it begins to dip down um, uh, to the southeast from the, from the northwest. Okay, that's where your main flow is. Remember, you got the better low-level thermo thermodynamic atmosphere building into this flow. So where does your best overlapping of your ingredients occur? Probably somewhere into here. Flows up here, a little bit of push in the atmosphere, definitely enough push, and you have your best overlapping of ingredients right here into this region um, for Wednesday. And you can see the little ripples. You see this little ripple right into here? Okay. And I think there could be some severe weather back in the northern plains again for um, uh, Wednesday. There's a potential for it. Okay. Keep this going. Continue to kind of figure out what happens for Thursday. Come on. Come on. Work for me. Don't let me have to. Okay. Good. There's that mid-level jet screeching across the northern plains and north central U.S. And then we get into a Thursday evening. And flow's going all the way up here. It's kind of coming down here and you can see, you can kind of see, you see that little dig right in here? That's your trough that we just showed you on the 500 millibar charts. And um, if you look right here, there's little uh, dips right here in these lines. That's your energy. And it's funny, they're showing more energy back here in Kansas, right here into this region, than they are back here, well, over here further east into Iowa near Chicago. It makes me wonder if, and this is only one model output, I, these, this, this video would go on for two hours if I was to compare all this stuff with different model outputs, but it makes me wonder if they'll put more of a higher severe weather threat maybe a little bit further into this region for Thursday. We'll see what happens. But in general, favorable thermodynamics pushing in this region, which we're about to show you. Kinematics are right here. You get too far up into this region. You get involved into the troughing, which brings drier air. You're lacking thermodynamics, most likely. So we'll watch. Okay. And then we start to get into our Friday, which I'll also show. Might as well. Uh, Friday, there's that trough digging now. And we got to watch. You're definitely going to have a summer type environment building into this. Where's your best flow going to be overlapping over your best thermodynamics? I mean, I would favor some of the higher populated regions. Check out this ridge building up. Coming down, ridge built in. There's that embedded energy from that cutoff low right into there. So I think that you can see the pieces pretty well on the screen. And, you know, the last thing we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up with is <clears throat> your uh, dew points. Remember, thermodynamics is your higher dew points, how high are your dew points. And it's a big thing you look at this time of the year, especially when you're talking on something pretty far out. And, you know, you start off Monday morning, most of your moisture is con confined uh, to the deep south. Lower dew points across the, the Central Plains and the Midwest, especially the Great Lakes region, it's very dry. Dew points in the 30s and 40s. But, you know, you start to move into your Monday. You get this surge right in here. You see in this area of dew points in the upper 50s, low 60s. That will get the job done in the high plains, the northern plains. Because you're higher up in elevation, you're like a giant plateau. The higher up you get, uh, the little amount of uh, higher in thermodynamics that you need. So, it's not a rich tropical air mass up here, but you typically aren't going to get that up here. But here it is. You know, you got the pool of rich. Um, nah, I'm, I'm kind of uh, being a hypocrite and saying what I, you know, what's not in place. But you, you got a pool of um, favorable uh, dew points up here, favorable moisture at the surface. And then you got the flow kind of moving into this region. And that's why you're going to have the better threat of severe weather up here. Um, definitely a lot of moisture down here, just lacking as lacking the flow for uh, Monday down uh, kind of further south. If that increases, then you'll have an increased severe weather threat in Texas for tomorrow also. And then you get into uh, Tuesday. You know, Tuesday is kind of a day where, you know, is there going to be enough push in the atmosphere to take advantage of this little slither of favorable low-level moisture that gets all the way up and just north of Minneapolis? It's, that's something to watch for. Now, as we get into Wednesday, it's a different story. Plenty of moisture. It's just how good is your flow on top of this moisture going to be? Dew points well into the 60s, a very humid day in Minneapolis for Minneapolis standards. Uh, the corn will be sweating in Iowa. Dew points well into the 70s into Iowa, very moist air uh, basically across this entire region. And then we get into Thursday, even more moist air in place. I mean, dew points getting close to 80 degrees in Iowa areas of northern Missouri. Well, this pool of dew points in the 70s right over the Midwest could have some big time thunderstorms in this region if you have enough flow over this area. But you do have the slight risk already. 
And then once again, you know, we have to watch for the Northeast. Are you going to have favorable thermodynamics for the Northeast for severe weather? And the um, the GFS says you do. You got dew points well into the 60s. So we got to watch the Northeast, the I-95 corridor, um, certainly for a Friday. So that's breaking down the system. Now let's kind of talk about what could potentially un un could unfold tomorrow as far as what the radar could look like. And we look at the HRRR model, and um, we'll kind of go through this pretty quick, guys. No point in staying on this too long. If you live out here, this is potentially what the radar looks like, and it makes sense. You got this west to east flow. Look at these thunderstorms forming in, in western, the western Dakotas, uh, even in eastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, even down here to Colorado. They could evolve into clusters of storms and sweep across uh, the north central plains and the high plains of the U.S., and and then last into the overnight hours, and we'll see how much they hold together. But I can tell you the H triple R model does not look too concerning, but we'll certainly watch for it. And then we'll kind of move past Monday. And what does this look like at the surface? Well, you know, Tuesday doesn't show a lot. And so it would make sense that, you know, they're just retaining a general risk right in here. You see the low pressure up here? It's way up here. So you're probably lacking that low, la low level push in the atmosphere to get these storms going in the Midwest, okay? But you do see the storms firing down here in Texas. Now we start to get into Wednesday. Okay. Shows a low right into here. But, you know, Wednesday afternoon, not a lot of thunderstorms developing in that slight risk area that's right here, right? It really takes later in the day the low. And I know you see it jump from right here to right here. Just ignore that. There's going to be a low somewhere in here. But you see the thunderstorms developing in Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, Iowa. You see the uh, greens and the oranges, yellows, almost reds here. That's going to be your, you know, epicenter of your storms. And then, you know, you start to move into your Thursday. And there's the storms firing right here where Iowa, Illinois, you know, Wisconsin meets some storms in the lower lower Michigan area. Where's that low going to be? Somewhere probably up into here. Okay. And look at all these thunderstorms that really get going Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening down here in the Midwest. Clusters of storms. We'll have to watch the evolution of this. And then we get into Friday. And... Look, I mean, Friday could be could have some thunderstorms across the northeast. It even shows it off. Um, what is it? I keep getting confused what model I'm at. I know I'm kind of jumping back and forth between the GFS and the Euro. But the European does show those storms. Look how much, look at all this rain in Florida. We'll talk about that here in a second. But you see these storms, you know, Friday across the northeast, maybe even the mid-Atlantic. So that's the update on the tropics, guys. Got very detailed for you folks. I'm sorry, the uh, severe weather. Now let's talk about the tropics. So what we do know is, and... Nope, don't have any new information. Uh, no new tropical cyclone activity is, ex is, ex is basically expected over the next seven days. So there's no area of interest on, um, you know, from the National Hurricane Center. So officially, nothing is officially out there, if that makes sense. So we got that. That could change over the next couple of days. Now, if we jump right to the satellite, okay, true view, beautiful look at what's going on in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. This is the Gulf of Mexico, Western Caribbean, Central Caribbean. Cuba, uh, the Bahamas, Jamaica, you know, et cetera, Yucatan Peninsula. The wider colors, uh, that's indicating where you got moisture, showers and storms popping up or just some cloud cover. And, you know, you see some tropical moisture down here. Nothing, uh, you know, overly impressive. I mean, really, it's nothing too crazy. I think this will change, though. This will be something we have to watch over the next few days. As of now, just some showers and storms, you know, associated with, um, just basically CAG, uh, basically um, the Central American uh, gyrum down here where you just get a lot of moisture, a broad area of low pressure, broad area of spin that sometimes could develop into something. So nothing really you can see on satellite right now. You look at the latest GFS, guys. Let's compare some model guidance. Latest GFS, Tuesday morning. Now let's start off there. Let's just get you know about 36 hours ahead of us. Doesn't show anything impressive, right? Just a big blob of green here. A lot of moisture off the coast of the southeast. Now, let's continue to move. If you're confused, I forget I forget to say any days or anything like that. Just look up here. This is for um, getting into Tuesday evening. OOZ Wednesday is Tuesday evening. Zulu time, I know it's kind of confusing. Just look up Zulu time. I'll explain that one day when we have some slow time. But a um, lot of tropical moisture over Florida. You see these not only greens, but yellows and reds. A lot of tropical storms, uh, tropical downpours, uh, not like multiple tropical storms, but just tropical rains is what I'm saying. And then we start to get into Wednesday. You notice that this doesn't really climb into the southeast 
I'm going to explain exactly why here in a second. But most of this moisture stays down here over Cuba, uh, just over Florida because it sticks out like a sore thumb. Thursday morning, you start to notice some of this moisture begins to creep a little bit further north, starting to get all the way to the South Carolina coastline based off the GFS. And then we start to get into Friday morning, just still raining like crazy. And then when you get into Friday, guys, this is when we start to watch in this entire area here for some sort of dominant piece of energy to really uh, come into its own. Try to develop. I think it's not going to happen early this week, midway this week. I think if it's going to happen, it's going to happen at a later portion of this week into this weekend, maybe even early next week. But you start to get into Friday evening, pops off a low pressure right in here, right? Just off the west coast of Florida, starting to get more moisture into South Carolina, Georgia now. Um, and then we start to get into next weekend, about six days out. This is just slingshotting a ton of moisture into Florida continuum. But once again, 150 hours out, all the way next Saturday, this is still not got into the deep south really yet. It really takes until we get like literally eight days out before it really pushes a big plume of tropical moisture into the deep south. So that being so far out, is it going to happen? I mean, I don't know. That's something to watch out for. Okay, now do we have the 12Z euro up? We do not. So we don't have the 12Z euro up, but it shows pretty much the same thing. And we can go out about 90 hours and you can already see, you know, Wednesday evening, plume of moisture right into here. What we can look at with the euro, and I'll show you in a second, is the VORT map. So what you're looking at here is the 850 millibar of VORT map. So this is a this is a spin about a mile above our heads here. Okay. And when you see the yellows, the oranges, you know, think of that as just pieces of energy in the low levels of the atmosphere, which is 850 millibars, okay? So we'll start this off on the euro. If you look right here, there's a piece of energy here, and that's associated with this tropical moisture. And one thing I want you to fo focus your eyes on, which is going to be really hard to see, is you see the wind barbs here? See how they're kind of spinning right in here? And then you look right here over like the central and, and western Gulf of Mexico. They're more more so just kind of flatlined here, and they're, you got winds... Uh, you know, coming out the um, east. Um, so we look for these to kind of rotate. Like down here, you see the wind barbs like screeching out the southeast right down here across areas of um, uh, the Caribbean. But when they start to kind of move in crazy different directions, that's when we could potentially have a little bit of a spin. So you can see that on the GFS right in the armpit of Florida, right in the, you know, like the northeast um, sections of the Gulf of Mexico. You have that. But it's really as you start to get into Friday, you see these more vibrant colors, even a spin off the coast of the, of the southeast. But you see this one spin right here on the GFS. This is what we watch for. Can this develop some sort of low-level circulation with all this? And it really does on the GFS. Okay, it's right here. This is next Saturday evening. You got an all-out little spin right over the Gulf of Mexico. And it actually keeps going and goes all the way into like Louisiana early next week. A lot of models have this. They, when you go, when you kind of extend them further out, they really like the idea of all this moisture hanging out in the mid-range, kind of in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, western Caribbean. Eventually, though, it kind of unleashes further northwest. And with the Euro, it kind of shows the same thing. Okay, this is the 12Z Euro. Not a whole lot of spin out there midweek. We get into Friday. You can see these wind bars, if you look really closely, very light, low-level spin over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But we start to get into Saturday, a little bit of a darker shaded uh, color right in here, indicating a stronger uh, piece of energy. And then same thing, except it happens a little bit faster on the Euro. We get into about next Sunday morning. This takes an all-out little spin and takes it right into the Gulf Coastline. Okay, and, and, and let, me, let me remind you guys, just because it has a spin, it might not even meet a tropical depression. It's just something we watch. The Gulf of Mexico can do some wild things. I think we all should know that, especially for our folks that live along the Gulf Coast line. So both models do show that spin, right? Now, what about uh, the GFS ensemble guidance? Remember, this shows little numbers on the map. This indicates it basically throws all the members on one model output for us. So you're going to see many numbers. The more you see these numbers clustered up together, and the more that these colors kind of begin to brighten up, like you see down here in the Pacific, the higher the chance that this particular 
um, ensemble guidance is showing of maybe a low pressure developing. Think of it like that. So, you know, we're getting into Wednesday, a little bit of a signal down here. But like I said, it really starts to get going as we get deeper into the week. Friday morning, there's two things going on. A little bit of a signal right here. And then there's a signal down here in the Western Caribbean kind of growing again. And then it really likes it really likes the idea of the signal in the Western Caribbean becoming the dominant feature. But you still, you see the wild, the wide variance of this. Got many members scattered across the entire area. But it really wants to find some very strong members as we get into next weekend. And, you know, there, now these are outliers. Like as a 980 millibar hurricane right here, a 990 millibar strong tropical storm, low end hurricane right in here. But it really highlights this area of some kind of development. Now, is that going to happen? I don't know. But I can tell you, we take this one the entire run. It, it really shows, you know, maybe the potential for some higher end activity as we get a little bit deeper into the month. Now, the further we get out on this, the crazier it gets. But um, I will show you the European Ensemble, too. And um, we can only go, um, even though the European, the 12 Z European Ensemble has ran, uh, I like to just keep it like this. So this only goes... All the way out to about late Friday night, this coming Friday night, it starts to show a signal right here. Okay, so to, to me, let's see if, oh, cool. Look, check this out. We we actually have the 12Z look. So new model output. So that's cool on the fly. So once again, a very, very weak signal as we get into this weekend here. Just a couple members. But if you notice, there's a little something trying to brew down here too in the Western Caribbean. And uh, then it just gets kind of everywhere. I wouldn't even call that much of a signal, but there's still some members here. And there's some stronger members in here, too. But, man, the European, as we get into early next week, European Ensemble really latches on to the idea of something developing in the Western Caribbean, maybe even into the, was the Bay of Campeche. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, right here in this region right here. So that's something we need to watch for, guys, for sure. So. Um, what about all this tropical moisture? What's steering this? Well, the reason, remember I talked to you here, in a, here a minute ago about how all the moisture is going to really stay confined to Florida, Cuba, and the Caribbean for a long time. Well, this is because if you look at the 200 millibar wind flow, um, which is 30, 40,000 feet up in the air, um, if you look at these wind streams, they're kind of going like this, right? And they kind of like dive down into here. Uh, wind streams kind of digging like through this region. So, you know, basically all this moisture right into here, as far as the upper wind pattern, it's going to have a hard time getting pulled up into here because, well, it can't because you have a current that's really basically in a way energy right into here. The current is really shunning it south, keeping it down here, really just confining all the moisture to not only just Florida, but like the southern tip of Florida, not even like north Florida, the panhandle. OK, but as you move forward here in time. You get into Tuesday, you get into Wednesday, you get into Thursday. Look how this is beginning to bend now. So this is kind of shooting down this way, right? And then it's almost kind of starting to shoot back a little bit further north like this now. You can really see it up here, and then it kind of dives in like that. So what does that mean for the moisture down here? Well, this is probably going to very slowly begin to shift a little bit further north. It's going to be able to get pulled in a little bit north. But you really start to see it as we get into this weekend. And an all-out, very weak upper trough begins to dig into the Gulf of Mexico. You can barely see it on the 500 millibar chart. You really can only see it in the 200 millibar. But this dives down into here, and then it shoots up like that. What does this do? It takes up all this moisture right down here and begins to surge it a little bit further north now still not all the way up into the carolinas but it's starting to get pushed a little bit further north and then we take it all the way to clear through the weekend and you can really see it now as we're all the way into like next saturday or sunday flow kind of going like this and then it gets pulled up you can see the flow right in here and then you'll have the opportunity check out this anti-cyclonic flow we'll talk more on that in the coming days but this will allow for this moisture to kind of get pulled way up in here because the upper wind pattern forces that moisture basically slingshots it further north. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and, you know, dry air is indicating the brown, moist air is indicating the green. You can see it very well here. As you can tell, a lot of dry air stuck here in the southeast. 
right? Green air, moist air for Florida. Stays that way for a while. All that green you're going to see just kind of hangs out over Florida, just getting pushed into Florida. But as we get into this weekend, really the later portion of the weekend, around this time next week, look at how the green begins to take over the southeast. Okay, it starts to get pulled north at this point. And then we have to really watch. You know, I think this week is definitely a week to watch. But I'll be honest, I would say this coming weekend into early next week is really a time frame I'm watching for the tropics. This week is going to be a watching game. I think next week, I'm not going to say it's game on, but it's something we need to watch. As far as how much rain could fall to kind of round this like hour-long video up, um, man, this is just between now and Friday midday, this coming Friday. They're going for over 10 inches of rain in southwest Florida. Anybody who's still under drought conditions from Tampa Bay to Orlando points south, this is going to destroy your drought. drought. And, and it's, it's just going to, you're going to get too much rain too fast, most likely. But you notice the cutoff up here. Not much rain when you get into the southeast. It's all confined to the peninsula of Florida and really the southern half of the peninsula of Florida. So, you know, you take this all the way out to, I mean, really, this is through the weekend. And I mean, even more rain, guys. There's a chance for over a foot of rain for areas of southern Florida. So this is a big concern. Whew, we float through that pretty well, guys. That was good. Cats still here? Oh, yeah, they knocked out. So God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll talk to you again soon.